long and his hair growing long and he was like an animal with dad just didn't know what he's doing yeah yeah, yeah and he found out pretty quick right. the minute he saw the fingers writing on the wall yeah. his countenance fell his knees began to knock yeah come on Fear gripped his soul. The party didn't last very long, and your party won't either. Amen? Right. Regardless of what you think, hell will not be the party place. Amen? Yeah. It didn't take long until laughter turned to mourning. Amen? And their joy turned to grief. That's right. Proverbs 5 and 1. How long have I been preaching? About 10 minutes? All right. Proverbs 5 and 1. When you have it, say Amen. Proverbs, the fifth chapter, the first verse. We're going to talk about the lips of a strange woman. We're going to talk about Amen. sin this morning. <clears throat> Sister Nancy, God, that's all counts. My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding, yeah. that thou mayest regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge. Mm. For the lips of a strange woman, and I wrote in parentheses their sin. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. You see, sin doesn't come to you and say, you know, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to destroy you. By the time I get done, your life is going to be miserable. No, 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 no. How does a man sin? Whenever he is drawn away of his own lust. Right. When, he is he enti when he is enticed. You know what that means? He's seduced. Right. Amen. Amen. I don't know, I was, I was going to use this as an example, but maybe it's not a good example. I'll throw it out there anyway. It's hard to see how a 90-year-old woman that weighs 600 pounds, don't have no teeth or no hair, would be able to seduce a man. Amen? Mike did in the day that we live. Right. But they come by for the meal. They don't, look, they don't look like that. They look better than that. Amen? They seduce you because they, the, the sin will give you a picture of something that is pleasurable. Something that you want. Something that you desire. That's exactly what he's saying here. He's saying the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. Sin will sweet talk you. Right. Amen? Sin will sweet talk you. He'll talk you just like David whenever he went out and he, he walked on the rooftop there and he looked and he saw Bathsheba. She was easy to look upon. He didn't walk out there and see, you know, King Tut taking a bath, 500 pound guy. That wouldn't have tempted him any. But he walked out there and he saw this woman that was beautiful. Right. And his lust began to stir up inside of him. And it began to draw him away. It began to entice him. It began to seduce him. And he didn't say, listen, you know, this ain't going to be fun. This is going to be awful. When it's all done, done you're, the prophet's going to be standing with his finger in your face and God's going to be rebuking you. The sword's not going to leave your house and the baby's going to die and you're going to suffer all of this judgment. If he had him, if sin of it came that way, if the devil had showed up like that, David would have said, get behind me, devil. I'm going back to the house where I'm supposed to be. Amen. But it, it, it approached him as something pleasurable and that's exactly Exactly what sin will do. Sin will try to entice you, try to seduce you, try to get you to think it's something pleasurable. Oh, you can fool around a little bit, it ain't gonna hurt nothing. You can take just a little bit, it ain't gonna hurt nothing. Yeah, but sin ain't never satisfied with just a little bit. Sin is greedy. Sin wants not just part of Bill Willis. Sin wants all of Bill Willis. And he think he might think, well, I can just dabble a little bit. No, sin ain't satisfied with that. Sin's gonna eat at you until it has the whole thing. It's going to pull at you until it's got all of you. Until finally it controls you and you can't get rid of it. That which you thought, oh, I can stop anytime. I can quit doing this anytime. Yeah, you'll find yourself to the place to where you can't. You'll find yourself to the place of thinking, oh God, why can't I quit? Why can't I stop? Every time you do it, you'll walk away thinking, I ain't never doing that again. I'm never going to do it again. Sin will make you miserable. It'll make you depressed. It'll make you oppressed. It'll destroy you. It'll take away your joy. It'll take away your peace. It'll steal everything you got in God. It'll, it'll pick at you till there ain't nothing left on the vine. Amen. It'll eat at you. Right. Hey, Brother Billy, you're being awful dramatic. Yes, sin's results are pretty dramatic. Amen? Yeah, man. Sin's results are pretty dramatic. Mm -hmm. Lips as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. Mm -hmm. But listen to this. Here comes the warning. Yeah. 
but her end is bitter as wormwood. Sharp as a two-edged sword. We're talking about sin this morning. Her feet go down to death. Did you hear that? When sin is finished, it brings forth death. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is finished, it brings forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. We have seen time and time again how quickly sin's pleasures turn to torment. Amen. 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 And the example that I have to give you this morning is no different than all the rest. The Bible, when talking about King Ahab, have you heard of him before? Yeah. Ahab and Jezebel. If there was ever a first family of sin, it would probably be Ahab and Jezebel. Right. King and queen of sin. Amen. Amen. We find that the Bible says, and this hit me like a ton of breeze. This goes right along with everything that we've been talking about. 1 Kings 16 and 30 says, Ahab the son of Omri yeah. did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Yeah. Now go back and look at all the other kings that was before him and all the evil that was done and realize how evil this man must have been because the Bible says he was more wicked and more evil, Brother Sleece, than all the men that were before him. Yeah. And it came to pass, I'm in mean, 1 Kings 16 and 31. Listen to this statement. And it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam. Did you hear that? As if it was some light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, not even regarding the end that Jeroboam had, not even regarding the end that sin always has. Yeah. It was a light thing for him to walk. Just like it was a light thing for Belshazzar to walk in the sins of his father. It was a light thing for the, 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 the uh, Ahab to walk in the sins of Jeroboam. He thought it was a light thing. He didn't take it serious enough. Right. As if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam. Did you hear that? Jeroboam's entire family was eventually wiped out. Yeah. And here this man is thinking it's a light thing. Yeah. I'll walk in the same sins. It ain't going to happen. That's what we think. If you really get down to the root of it, we think we can handle it when others couldn't. Yeah. We think that it won't harm us like it did everybody else. Yeah. If you get down to really where the rubber meets the road, that's what we think. Mm -hmm. We get cocked up in pride and we think we can handle it. No, it'll handle you. Amen. It'll handle you. Right. Amen. Unconfessed sin in your life will kill you. All right. I'm not saying you saved one day and lost the next. I'm not saying that because you sinned today, if you died right now, you're going to hell. I'm telling you that the longer you allow that sin to reign in your life, the longer you allow it to grow, the closer you are in danger of losing your salvation. Right. You'll find yourself lost as a ball in high weeds, and we got a lot of them that are lost as a ball in highways and they don't even know it. Right. What did this man do? He took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbael, mm -hmm. king of the Sidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. Yeah. Verse 32 says he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal which he had built. Mm. My goodness. Not only did he worship Baal, yeah. not only did he take to wife this Baal worshiper, he built an altar, and not only did he build an altar with the bill, but in the house of Baal which he had built. Amen. Right. Biggest part of the big churches that we got going on right now, you know, they got their big building plan. That's what they're building. It's closer to being a house of Baal than it is a house of the Lord. Amen. Because they'll stand in their mega church in their pulpit and preach everything but the gospel. Everything but about hell. Everything but about sin. And they might as well just rear them up a statue of Baal and bow down to him. He reared up an altar to Baal in the house of Baal which he had built. And then he made a grove 
And it says, And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God. He did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Now, I can't go into all of the details of the wickedness this man did. It'd take me too long. I've been preaching too long already. But you can read it for yourself. One of the things you'll find him doing is his neighbor had a vineyard. His neighbor's name was Naboth. And you, we talk about how greedy sin is. Ahab eaten alive. As a matter of fact, I'll read you a scripture here in a minute that says he sold out to wickedness. He sold himself to wickedness. He had land, he had his stuff, but he wanted Naboth's too. Right. What did Nathan tell David when he stood before him? He said a man had one lamb and there was another man that had a bunch of lambs. And a stranger came or a traveler came and he wanted something to eat and instead of taking of his own lambs, which he had plenty, he thought, no, I ain't going to take of my stuff. I'll take that man's lamb. Naboth's vineyard not far from that. He goes to Naboth, Ahab goes to Naboth and he says, I'll buy it from you. I'll give you something for it. I'll trade you land for it. I'll give you money for it. And Naboth says, no. It's my inheritance. I cannot trade it. You know what Ahab does? He gets mad and he sulks. He goes home. He won't eat nothing. He won't say nothing. He's like we are sometimes, you know. I'm mad. I didn't get my way. Yeah. Some adults worse than children. Amen. If things don't go just like you want it, mm. leave me alone. All right. Shut up. Come on. And God's thinking, no, you shut up. Yeah. Amen. Selfishness. Right. Sin is greedy. Sin is selfish. Right. It don't just want. It won't just leave you just desiring some things. You'll want everything to get your hands on. And Ahab wanted Naboth's vineyard and Naboth wouldn't let him have it so he got all upset. Mm. And Jezebel says, oh, what's wrong, honey? Yeah. Here comes the lips of the strange woman. Mm. Smooth, amen, as honey drops. And, mm. What's wrong, baby? You mean Naboth won't give you what you want? The devil will talk to you like that. You mean, well, they didn't have no reason to treat you like that. Won't you get them back? Yeah. Why don't you just show them? Mm. Oh, my goodness, plowing corn this morning. Oh, man. Amen. Amen. That'd hit you. Amen. She says, what's the matter, sweetie? He won't let you have it. We'll fix him. We'll have some false witnesses accuse him of blasphemy. We'll get him stoned, and then you can have his stuff. And you know what happened? That's exactly what they did. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what they did. Put on a mock trial there, a kangaroo court, mm -hmm. stoned the man to death. Yeah. And Ahab got what he wanted. Mm -hmm. yeah. And no doubt the lips of that harlot, amen, for lack of a better word, the lips of that strange woman Jezebel was sitting there, honey. You got what you wanted. Yeah, but he's fixing to get. He's, sin's fixing to take him farther than he wanted to go, amen. Right. Sin's fixing to cost him, Brother David, more than he ever wanted to pay. Amen. The Bible says in verse 17, the same chapter, 1 Kings 21, and the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite saying, Arise and go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth. Did you hear that? Oh. He's in the vineyard of Naboth. God didn't say he's down there in his vineyard. No, he still belonged to Naboth in God's eyes because Ahab took it wrongfully. Amen? That's right. He said, you go down there. He's in the vineyard of Naboth. And you, because he's went down to 